All right, it is Wednesday, October 28th, and we are in Galatians chapter 4, verses 17 through 20. And as I looked at these verses earlier, I was just reminded of the pastoral heart. You say, well, what is that? It's, it's the heart that God's people do well with him. It, it is the heart and mindset as a servant that I serve God's people so that they can be equipped and helped and they can move forward in their relationship with Christ. And, and I'm reminded of that just in terms of my experience as a pastor because I have seen mutinies rise up. I've seen people with sin in their lives challenge leadership. I've, I've seen some things that uh, helped me to realize that not everybody has the church's best interest in mind. And, and as we've been looking at the Judaizers, these false teachers, we'd recognize they did not have the Galatians' best interest in mind at all. In fact, Paul says, those people, and referring to these Judaizers, these liars, these false teachers, those people are zealous for you, but not in a good way, Instead, they want to isolate you from us so that you may be zealous for them. In other words, they're in it for politics. They, they want to just win people over to their side. They're not thinking about the gospel. They're not thinking about these people living in, with, and through Jesus and being equipped to live this life for the glory of God. That's not, their mind is nowhere near that. And then Paul in verse 18, it's interesting, Paul says, Nevertheless, it is good to be zealous if it serves a noble purpose. And so just with the thought of zeal in Paul's mind and heart, he talks about the reality for the believer that you and I are to be zealous for the Lord and we're not to hold back in our zeal for Jesus. And that's a good thing. So zeal stewarded in the right way is a good thing. And then he says, the remainder of verse 18, he says, at any time and not only when I'm with you. In other words, these are individuals with, that are called to live in integrity with the Lord, that we're to be zealous for the Lord at all times, not just when somebody of importance is, is in your presence. And then, then Paul says in verses 19 and 20, he says, my children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. In other words, he's going, man, something's up. I can't figure out with the, in terms of the foundation of your life and your walk with Jesus. I know you received salvation, but something is up. And I'm, I, I'm concerned that perhaps, you know, what went wrong? And then verse 20, how I wish I could be with you now and change my tone because I'm perplexed about you. And again, it all goes back to what Paul has been sharing all along, they received grace in Jesus Christ, and yet they're now trying to uh, achieve something for which they've already received. They've already received grace. And so why would you add something to that? Why would you set aside what God has given to you in your life and your walk with God and a personal relationship? Why would you set that aside and try to do everything in your own strength and your own effort by, by your own means? And so Paul is certainly perplexed. But let's take a time and let's pray uh, for Christ Fellowship Church. And let's just pray for the church that it belongs to the Lord, that the Lord leads us and that the Lord cares for and equips his people for more. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that we can turn to you. You are the ultimate shepherd. You're the great shepherd. And all pastors, all under shepherds are underneath your lead, Lord, those that serve you, those that belong to you. And so, Father, we pray for our church, for Christ Fellowship Church, Lord, that you would anoint this church with your leadership, Lord. God, we pray for the well-being of every single person at Christ Fellowship Church. Lord, we pray that they would be led, that they would be equipped, that they would grow in their walk with you. And we pray for protection for Christ's Fellowship Church, Lord, that you'll protect us from the enemy, Lord, that you'll protect us from false teachers, that you'll protect us from a mutiny, that you'll protect us from things that would harm your people, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. We believe that you'll do it and you get all the glory. We pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.